we're ready to get going. I think, I think we're good. Yeah, I think we can start. Thanks. All right. Good morning, Bokir Tov, if you are in Israel, or early, early morning if you're calling in from uh, California. Uh, to our second uh, Studio Israel um, session. Uh, we are super excited to have you here this morning uh, for this uh, incredible um, second uh, part of our four-part series of Studio Israel. This is a, um, an incredible collaboration and I will uh, thank everybody in a moment. My name is Karen Tab. And I uh, come to you from um, sitting in my studio in uh, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. And I am a, uh, um, a nonprofit professional turned full-time artist and social warrior activist uh, using my art to do that. Um, I um, uh, wanted to welcome you all um, on Erev Chanukah, we, we will light our first candle tonight and it's uh, kind of fitting that we're talking about this uh, topic of uh, Mizrahi feminist art uh, in Israel with two incredible scholars, uh, Dr. Sivan uh, um, uh, Shantig Shtang, I'm sorry, and Averid Nisim, and I will introduce them in a minute. Um, I... Uh, it's hard not to draw parallels when what, between what we're going to see this morning and uh, what is going on vis-a-vis -vis race relations in Israel. And I, I think it's really important that while there's a world of difference, we keep the similarities in mind because the parallels are in many ways quite eerily. Our wor work is cut out for us. And, uh, and I say this over and over again, even after COVID is all set and done, our work is still ahead of us. And um, I think we need to put our foot to the pedal uh, even when we're all vaccinated. Um, so a few housekeeping uh, um, issues. One is this is a recorded event. Please remember that it is recorded uh, for perpetuity as well as for um, uh, accessibilities, uh, accessibility issues. Um, the other is, um, if you have any questions, there will be time for Q&A at the end. Please put them in the chat. Amy will uh, collect them and then hand them over to Sivan at the end. Uh, we are scheduled to run over at uh, 10 uh, a.m. Um, because of the, there's so much meat in this issue. And so uh, feel free if you need to drop off uh, at 10 a.m. But please, if you can stay, it's gonna be a really incredible um, conversation. Um, this was supposed to be an in-person, on the ground, in Israel, studio visits with curators and artists in uh, incredible arts and culture figures in Israel is a really incredible way to look at Israel through a very new lens. Um, there is nothing that we cannot learn about Israel through the world of arts, culture, food, and fashion. And we will take this trip, I promise, a scout's honor, we will take this trip and maybe even in March of 2022. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, Aside not being able to be in Israel, this is our second best uh, opportunity to visit with incredible Israeli curators and artists. And so without further ado, I would like to introduce Dr. Sivan Rajwan Stang. She's a visual cultural scholar. Um, her uh, research interests uh, are race, class, gender, and sexuality in Israeli and Zionist art and visual culture. During the past few years, she's conducted pioneering research on contemporary Mizrahi feminist fine art and on queer feminist fine art in Israel. Uh, Sivan holds a BFA in fine arts from the Bezalel Academy of Art and Design in Jerusalem and an MA and PhD in hermeneutics Herman, <laughs> and culture from Bar Ilan University. She's co-edited a number of books and she is also the research associate at the Hadassah Brandeis Institute um, here at Brandeis. 
Vered Nisim is an Israeli-based visual artist, mostly focused on photography and video installation. She's a graduate of the MFA program, Haifa University, and holds a BFA in, from the Amidrasha School of Art. She's exhibited in numerous solo and group exhibitions in the Tel Aviv University, uh, Museum, Haifa Museum, and Museum Eretz Israel in, um, uh, in Tel Aviv. She has received the Israeli Ministry and Culture uh, Award of Excellence for Young Artists and recently is, uh, was awarded the Becky Dekel Award for Feminist Art. Um, before we start, I would like to uh, make a plug and say thank you to the Jewish Arts Collaborative. Laura Mandel is the executive director right here. The Adassa Brandeis Institute, uh, Lisa, Lisa Fishbein, Amy uh, Powell and Nancy Leonard, the Schusterman Center for Israel Studies at Brandeis, Shana Weiss, and a very special thank you to CJP, to Sophie Krenzman, um, who, is, who has made this uh, series possible. So without further ado, Sivan, uh, Kasha. I, I will serve as translator, so double roll here. Hey, hello everyone, I'm uh, very, very excited to be here and to talk about uh, our issue. Uh, I want to thank everyone, uh, but uh, I also have to start, <laughs> so I'll start. I'll do um, a share screen <clears throat> and um, uh, put my uh, presentation. Wait, uh, is it going to, oh, okay. So that's okay? Yes. Okay, so I'm, um, I'm, I'm going to give a, a paper about the, uh, you see <laughs> about what the, uh, in, in, in a minute. And uh, afterwards, I, I will interview Bered uh, shortly, and then people can ask questions uh, and we can uh, discuss uh, our issues. So my paper today is a part of a wider uh, research, and I call it uh, The Empire Shoots Back, uh, Mizrahi Feminist Visu Video Art and Photography. Um, and uh, our, my my presentation today is going to be, is called uh, Every Once in a While I'm Attacked by a Flying Drug, a Cleanliness and Dirt in Mizrahi Feminist Video Art and Photography. So um, I'll start, right? <clears throat> uh, Every once in a while I'm attacked by a flying rug, writes Mizrahi poet Yonit Naaman, in an essay in which she expresses her, her anxiety about the violence of the role that Zionism designated to Mizrahi women for over 100 years, cleaning work. A third generation of women cleaning workers, a man writes of herself, her grandmother, her hands would work by themselves, squeezing the rug and dipping it in a bucket over and over. In her writing, Naaman testifies to the social, mental, and emotional injustice inflicted on her as a Mizrahi woman living under the threat of an inher inheritance addressed to her against her will, but she also expresses immunity and strength that dismantles the racial labeling that troubles her heart. Naaman's writing and the visual artworks I'll discuss today present an intense confrontation with what Mizrahi anthropo anthropologist Nina Mutsafi Haller called the issue of the intergenerational reproduction of status and the ability to imagine future beyond it and beyond the social limitations that constructed it. At the heart of our discussion then, is the visualization of a charged mental space unfolding between Mizrahi women, mothers and daughters, in which they both process the racial labeling and face the possibilities of internalizing, transferring, and dismantling it. The cultural, social, political tension between cleanliness and dirt has accompanied Zionism since its early history. 
Tefna Hirsch showed that Zionist hygiene was a cultural mission brought from the Western world of the 20th century to the Arab Eastern ignorance that took place in Palestine. Arabness of Arabs, but also of, of Arab Jews, that is Mizrahi Jews, were perce was perceived as a dangerous threat of pollution in relation to the principles of modernism in light of which Zionist society sought to imagine his, itself. In fact, Mizrahi Jews or Mizrahim in Hebrew were perceived as the opposite of all the, that the cultural repertoire identified with the West represented. Respectively, Zionist hygienic discourse racialized Mizrahim by presenting them as the antithesis of the hygienic person, not only in terms of their living, physical, and even mental conditions, but also their character. One of the main arenas used to promote the Zionist hygiene was photography. According to Rona Stella, the role of photography was a tool for Zionist pro propaganda, as a tool for Zionist pro propaganda was formed around the beginning of the 20th century in parallel with the Zionist establishment effort to promote the national enterprise. Sela showed how Zionist organizations established a colonial language of photography, quote, and by portraying the Palestinian native as backward, shaped the progressive identity of the Jew in his country. Zionist photography established also an intranational colonial division of roles between Ashkenazim and Mizrahim. As I have shown elsewhere in the context of early Bezalel photographs, institutional Zionist photography gave Ashkenazi women a visibility, signifying a role of work and political action in, Han in Hannah Arendt's terminology, and Mizrahi women a role of survival labor. The racial division, this racial division of roles can be seen in 1950s Zionist videos, such as IDF's Roots in the Homeland. Wait. Uh, the, the video presents Ashkenazi women's practices of everyday life as an exemplary of hygiene, modernity, and political action, and Mizrahi women's practices as dirty, primitive, and related to survival labor. So let's see a few seconds of this uh, video. And uh, with the Zoom, it's uh, very uh, here. Here it is. Can you hear? Yes. Okay, 
uh, we'll send the links afterwards. And uh, where, where am I? Um, here. Okay. So Zionist hygiene's racial hierarchy between Jewish women was demonstrated also by Noah Hazan, who examined all photographs produced for the Hadassah organization in its early days. On the occasion of fundraising campaign, a publication of photo and a quote printed next to it declared, when the first nurse sent to Palestine by the Jewish women's organization Adassa in 1920 arrived in Jerusalem, she looked at the beautiful old and dirty land and said, we are going to clean this place up completely. Karen allowed me to show this. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. Um, so in the relationship between the text and the photograph, the place is represented by the group of Mizrahi women and the cleanliness by the Ashkenazi nurse. Indeed, within the cultural mission of Zionist hygiene, Ashkenazi women were subject of hygiene. Mizrahi women were its objects, at least in two senses, as a threatening pollution that needs to be cleaned, as we just saw, and as a cleaning workers. The work of cleaning, domestic cleaning particularly, was considered a non-rational survival labor. Ashkenazim, who saw themselves as ideological worker, workers, designated it to Mizrahim, the natural workers. Ashkenazi women who aspire to gender equality in the national, national division of roles gradually rejected the work of the domestic cleaning as it was considered the opposite of the ideological, ideological pioneering work. And so during the 1930s and 40s, most of the women working in domestic cleaning were Mizrahi and Arab. As Chaskin and Haruvi showed, during this period, Ashkenazi literature provided a variety of images linking Mizrahi women to cleaning work. These images were visualized in photo photographs and films. Levin Kipniks wrote that, um, a good Yemeni girl is better than an Ashkenazi girl. She works a lot and eats little. The main thing is to know how to deal with such a thing. Without a stick and a strap, you will not move her. Nathan Alterman wrote, in my left hand, a rug and bucket, in my right hand, a brush. When I get up for work, my, my mother says to me, my dear child, take the rug. The rug is Yemen, Yemeni. So I want to show again a few seconds from this uh, video from 1920. Um, where, where is it? Uh, just to show how the um, construction of the Im uh, visual image of the, uh, where is it? Ah, sorry, here. Of the Mizrahi cleaning worker. We can hear also uh, the um, uh, accent that they add to, as if it's a Mizrahi accent. Uh, 
So uh, let's go back to the, uh, sorry, it takes uh, time here. Um, okay. The tension around the history of tracking Mizrahi women to cleaning work has risen in recent years in the arenas of poetry, academic research, and art, in the photography of video artworks of contemporary third generation to immigration Mizrahi women artists. These artists operate within the tradition of feminist body art but unlike Ashkenazi women artists, such as Sigalit Landau or Eichhevet Weinfeld, who applied this artistic tradition in a way that left the racial aspects of their identity transparent, Mizrahi women artists focus on it and place it within the social, cultural, and political context of their work. Similar to the effort of American artists of racial minorities like Lorena Simpson and Anna Mendetta, third generation Mizrahi women artists examine the intersections between gender, race, and class relevant to their lives by using one of the historical and effective tools of colonial power, photography. How then do Mizrahi women artists position themselves in relation to the Zionist hegemonic photography? How do they, they construct the racialized image, image designed for them over the course of the history of Zionist photography? And how do they cope with the threatening inher inheritance of cleaning work designated to them by Zionism? From my point of view, uh, Mizrahi women artists invite us to an event of photography. That is, they take the position of the photographer and object of the photograph. I take the position of the viewer who mediate the meaning of the photographs. And together we form a new political structure, a Mizrahi feminist one, which allows us to appear as authors and agents of our own visibility and narrative. Pioneer third generation Mizrahi feminist artist Daphna Shalom series of photographs here thinks first raised the subject of Mizrahi women and cleaning work. Shalom took the photos when she came from New York to visit her mother's house in Tel Aviv. Shalom broke new ground for Mizrahi artists in many ways. Here she placed her home and family as artistic themes at a time when it was a domain of Ashkenazi artists dealing with the Holocaust. Shalom photographed her mother's, mother's sinks full of dirty dishes from a subject position of an Im immigrant who had moved away from her hometown. This position allowed her to delay the acceptance of the inheritance awaiting her in the sink. So instead of washing the dishes, she is observing them, getting ready to replace the labor of cleaning with an action of photography. Using photography, Shalom makes the private sp space public, politicizing the whole scene from the perspective of a feminist Mizrahi woman subject. The role, the role of Mizrahi women as cleaning worker stands at the center of Verat Nisim's early work. In, her, in the video, if I tell my, my life story, tears come out of my eye, Nisim is seen sta standing on a ladder, wearing a, a white dress, holding a green plastic funnel, and her mother, Estelle, who appears in her daughter's work regularly, at her feet. So let's let's watch um, a part of the where is it? Where where where, where is uh, a part of the video? Wait and do it here. Uh, 
Ouais, ouais. Ça va être pas. Try to so we don't have so much time so I'm going to uh, move on and you see mother leans on the sidewalk also wearing a white dress but one made of old-fashioned sponge rugs. She scrubs a, a carpet of yellow cleaning gloves and talks about the difficulties of her life in Israel, the hard work of cleaning, the desire to give education to her children and the sacrifice of her life for them as her body moves between crying, dancing and singing. The daughter is silent again throughout the, throughout the video, gazing at her mother from above with a hard, cold look and a vertical phallic sovereign body expression. Her phallic performance is highlighted by the, by the verticality of the ladder, ladder and her arms holding the funnel that, leak, that uh, uh, liquid uh, on her mother. Through the phallic spilling, Nisim produces for her mother more and more from the humiliating work that she herself provides her. While marking her mother as enslaved to this work, she marks herself as liberated from it as she holds the green funnel in her hands and raises her head as if she was the status of liberty. <clears throat> Nisim, who photographed herself as the Statue of Liberty in the photograph Liberty, embodies the liberal feminist Ashkenazi stance, but in an ironic fashion. Unlike the white modernist national and universal approach whose main practice is the rejection of tradition and the traditional community while sanctifying the actions of the rational individual, man or woman, the connection between Nisim and her mother is full of complexities, contradictions, and tensions. When Nisim punishes her mother for the inheritance she delivered her, but builds more and more stages for the, the delivery process, and when she seeks to put a limit to her world flowed with her mother pain but hardly separate for her, from her, she actually denies the dichotomous imperative to part with her mother and from her world or assimilate within it. She favors the border work between them as a spring of creation as a world assumption. The dynamic between Nisim and her mother in the dynamic Liberation is not necessarily outside the private space and beyond the work of cleaning. Liberation takes place when the racial gaze is, is replaced by a gaze that neutralizes it while shifting the situation of cleaning from the sphere of labor, of surviving in daily life to the political sphere. As Nisim's art is rooted between, uh, within the political tradition of feminist body art, and with this, the new, within this new space, the work of cleaning becomes a work of art and a political action. 
The other role of Mizrahi women as a threatening pollution that needs to be cleaned occupied Tamar Nisim in her video, Braided, that was presented as a part of an exhibition that dealt with the Zionist hygiene project from an autobiographical Mizrahi perspective. The video showed the artist's young daughter braiding her hair while her mother's voiceover tells of her Bukharian grandmother who coped with Zionist hygiene dictates. So I'll show, show, I'll show a few seconds from the video and braid it. אני זוכרת את הארון של סבתא. חולצות חרש וקיסרית לבנות, וצברוני תחרה, ריח של בוסים בארונות, וניקיון עצמית. מה עבר אלייך מזה? איך ייראה הבית שלך? אמי ניסתה לחנך אותי לסדר, ניקיון וארגון מופתי ששררו בבית בו גדלה. אני מתמודדת עם הבלגן השורר בביתי, בלי יכולת להשליט בו סדר ראוי. Here we see again a charged di dynamic between mother and daughter, but while Nis Vered Nisim forced her mother to clean up other people's dirt, Tamar Nisim forces her daughter to clean up herself. While writing on Braided, I came across a photo that was given to me by the grand granddaughter of one of Adassa nurses. The photographs show the girl with a Mizrahi appearance sitting on a chair, a nurse standing above her, examining her hair with glass sticks, and her white apron surround, surrounds the girl's head as if it were a light aura, aura. Richard Dyer, who analyzed the connections between uh, uh, the construction of whiteness in cinema, showed how a bright light coming from above evokes Christian iconography, iconography of Jesus shirded in the heavenly divine light. Here, the source of light is the nurse who thus receives the Christian attribute of a savior who redeems the child from her dark darkness. Additionally, the shooting angle gives the interaction a character of, this, of a display. The girl is shown prepared not only for the clinical examination of the nurse looking at her from above, but also of the viewer looking at her profile. Profile photography has long history as a practice of racial photography. In the first half of the 20th century, the period in which this photograph was taken, racial photography was used by Zionist scientists and art artists like Ephraim Moshe Lillian, Arthur Rupin, and Erich Brauer for studies claiming a racial hierarchy between Ashkenazi and Mizrahi Jews. Back to the video, Tamar Nisim adopts the Zionist gaze of Mizrahi woman and places her daughter as its object. But her voiceover reveals that this time the examination is reversed. The mother is looking for the traces of the establishment in physical practices that she feels have been inherited, inherited 
the same practices that her grandmother had to adapt following the dictates of Zionist hygiene. Another artistic strategy in this context can be traced in Moran Asraf's photography and video. Asraf uses raw cleaning pads to create rugs, dresses, and lately, during the COVID-19, face masks, which form a distance, uh, which from a distance seems exotic and seductive, but up close they are intimating and threatening. Lastly, Lior Grady expresses a strong ide identification with this feminine history. He creates a role reversal by lowering national symbols to the rank of a rug, stained forever with gold, a color associated in the West with the exotic Orient. In his exhibition, Natural Worker, dedicated to the historical dis dispossession of Yemenite community from the Kinneret farm in 1929, Grady floats the Kinneret Lake with gold, abstracting the contours of the national symbol and turning it into a stain. So this is, a, this is the presentation. And now I want to go uh, move quickly to Vered. And uh, I have talked enough. And now Vered, uh, uh, can you describe us the period of time when you started creating? How was the feedback from the Israeli art world? This is one of the early photographs. I will speak in Hebrew, okay? And Karen will uh, translate Ask me, it. okay? ההתעסקות שלי בחקר הזהות המגדרית האתנית והסוציו-אקונומית שלי התחילה כבר מהיותי סטודנטית במדרשה לאומנות. כאשר את מגיעה למקום ולא מוצאת את הקול והנראות שלך, את מבינה שהאומנות שלך היא ההישרדות שלך. אוקיי, אז... אוקיי, אז... Uh, Vered is sharing that her interest in gender, ethnic, and socioeconomic issues began in her college years. Uh, she had to find her own visibility and in order to do and find her own voice. And um, she realized that her art was her survival. <laughs> והצילום אפשר לי לבנות מחדש דרך הוריי את הדוקנאות של הפועלים שעלו ממדינות ערב. In order to, to do that, she had to go home. She had to document her close surroundings and her uh, photography allowed her to create uh, portraits of uh, blue collar workers from Arab countries in Israel. ולתת מקום לסיפור שלהם, ללא פילטרים הנוגעים באינטרסים של אחרים. היה חשוב לי לנפץ סטריאוטיפים הקשורים למגדר, לאתניות, לנקות את הלכלוך ולפנות מקום לדבר על זיכרונות והתקוות של ההורים שלי. So she uh, felt that she needed to create a situation where she could photograph without filters. to um, break stereotypes, to clean the dirt um, and create room for hope and memories of her, uh, of her parents. בתקופת הלימודים שלי לא דיברו על אומנות מזרחית באופן ישיר. לא היה מספיק תיעוד של קטלוגים, של תערוכות שעסקו בזה. כדי לחקור הייתי צריכה לקרוא מאמרים של סוציולוגים, אנתרופולוגים, ולעשות עבודת שטח ולהיפגש עם אומנים ואומניות שהתחילו לעסוק בנושא הזהות המזרחית שלהם. So um, at the beginning of, of Averid's studies, um, 
there was not a lot of uh, work written about uh, Mizrahi art. Um, there was not enough material, so she uh, had to go and meet with people, sociologists, anthropologists, different artists, um, to uh, begin doing her own investigation in this, uh, in this arena. ולקראת סיום הלימודים החלה להיות פתיחות זהירה לנושא הזהויות המגדריות והאתניות באומנות ישראלית. And uh, by the end of her studies there was already a beginning of an opening uh, of a conversation around the issues of uh, gender and Mizrahi art. וזה אפשר לי לדבר בפתיחות על עבודותיי ולהציג אותן מחוץ למסגרת הלימודים. And it uh, enabled an opportunity to, uh, to talk about and to showcase her art outside of her studies. <laughs> the rest is history, and here we are. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but uh, next was, your parents immigrated to Israel from Iraq. Uh, your father worked as a car uh, tinsmith, and your mother as a cleaning worker. And in your, your videos, Uh, which testify a deep and symbiotic connection between you. You are usually silent and uh, they talk, as in this video, a desert with, uh, within a town. Can you elaborate about this or explain? Okay. במקביל לשיח שמתחיל להתנהל בעולם האומנות, בזירת השירה קמה קבוצה שהיא נקראת ארס פואטיקה. In, uh, in parallel to the conversation in the literary world, the poetry literary world, uh, there was a group of form that was called Aus Poetica. So uh, this is my, uh, Aus is a kind of like a slang word on the, um, a degrading word for Mizrahi. So Aus Poetica. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ולמחות על האפליה האתנית שהתנהלה בעולם הספרות, בעולם הספרותי. So they, um, uh, they decided not to be silent and to fight back against the, um, the degrading or the mistreatment of Mizrahi uh, voices in poetry and literature. אני בחרתי במהלך הפוך. שבו במקום לדבר בשם ההורים שלי, אני אהיה הבמה שלהם. זאת שעומדת מאחורי המצלמה, הצינור שמעביר את המסר מעדות הראשונה. And so I decided to go, um, to do the opposite. Um, I uh, was going to be, instead of being uh, the voice for my parents, I was going to offer them the stage and be their, uh, the director of their own voices. I let them tell their stories while I stood behind the camera. <laughs> ולהאיר את השוליים החברתיים מבפנים. So, uh, my silence enabled them to speak. In fact, it uh, encouraged them to speak and to talk about the periphery of the, of, uh, of the, social, the social periphery in which they, they lived. So, my silence gave them more power to do so. Okay. Um... There are two re recurring, recurring uh, themes in your work, cleanliness and, uh, or cleaning work and marriage. And they are often uh, interwined, uh, as in the video we just saw and in the um, uh, Venus gaze uh, photographs in which you, you and your mother wear wedding dresses made of uh, white rugs or in the white carpet racket uh, interwined with flowers. Um, that reminiscent a uh, bridal bouquet. And the climax is this video uh, called uh, Dying to Dance at Your Wedding, where your parents uh, celebrate your wedding, uh, but you, uh, you, don't, uh, you do not uh, attend your own <laughs> wedding. So maybe you can uh, tell us something about it. זה מסמל עבורי מעגל של הסללה נשית שחוזר על עצמו. אחת... אוקיי. זה עבורי מסמלייזס את הטראקינג של אומן. 
that repeats itself. Atunake goelet ke nekudat si mula nikayon, nekudat a shefer shel metziut chayehem. So the, the wedding or the marriage is considered as the savior as opposed to the dirt, which is the low point event of their lives. So I use a lot of cleaning materials in my work. Uh, I give them a grandiose, a personification, uh, kind of to expand the realm between fiction and reality. I uh, find myself uh, waiting at that moment of midnight just between um, the, uh, the moment of loss and redemption or the master and slave uh, in this case. <laughs> Thank you. And um, the feminine body and the yellow color stand in the center of your work. And I repeat, uh, for example, the yellow glove sun or your photo in the kitchen wearing huba balls and Iraqi dish. So maybe you can uh, elaborate about the uh, themes. Okay. הצבע הצהוב הוא חלק דומיננטי בפלטת הצבעים שלי. צבעי הבסיס מסמנים עבורי מעמד חברתי. So, um, yellow is a dominant color in my work. It's part of the primary colors, and I use it as um, a way to talk about uh, social status. לדוגמה, הצבע הלבן מסמל מעמד הצווארון הלבן. ומנגד הכחול את מעמד הפועלים, למשל החלוק שאם היא לובשת. So white symbolizes for me uh, the dominant, uh, uh, the white color, the white dominance, and blue represents the, um, the blue color uh, working class, like the one my mother, uh, her mother is in the uh, top right. Photographs. So, last question, and I want uh, to, to 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 leave time for the question from the audience. Uh, journalist uh, Shani Littman wrote about your work that uh, it requires an art critic who knows how to read blue-collar metaphors and to give them artistic and politically political validity. validity. Such a critic is not easy to find in Israeli art world, says uh, uh, writes uh, Littman. So what do you think about, uh, uh, are the consequences of this uh, situation? Mm. So at the beginning of her work, very talks about the fact that it was actually very hard to digest or to take in her work because it was so direct and lacked a, a filter, um, very in your face. So uh, often the, um, the uh, in emotional aspect, dealing with the emotional aspect of uh, of the work is harder than the intellectual aspect of it. Um, the implications of that can be the, the flattening of the message uh, that she, that Vird is trying to convey, and um, it it can appear as non-relevant. So, uh, but the perseverance uh, to keep pushing the issue and the message and using this 
language and keeping it alive has, has paid off because it, uh, it has allowed me, it's allowed me to, uh, to occupy this very unique space in the art world. ואדם חשוב לי ליצור גשר בין עולם האומנות לאנשים שחשוב לי לתת להם את הנראות בעבודותיי. So uh, it's very important to Vera to um, continue to create this bridge between the art world and the people whom she's trying to give a voice and visibility to. And I think I... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay, so I <laughs> think <laughs> we're going yes, we're gonna leave room for questions. Um, so um, if you have um, questions, please put them in the chat and Amy is going to feed them uh, to Sivan and to Vered. So we have a question from uh, Sagi. Um, Raphael, do you want to ask it here? You can ask it yourself if you would sure, like. Sure, yeah, I put it in the chat, but I'm happy to ask it in person. Good morning from Los Angeles. Um, Sivan and Vered, uh, this has been really fascinating. Um, my question is about Shula Keshet and uh, Achoti movement that was uh, founded in a, about 15 years ago, and I think that it was at around the same time that Vered was in uh, art school. Um, do you, Vered, or do you, Sivan, see uh, your work in relation to Achuti movement? You want, I, uh, I answer him? It's okay if I answer in Hebrew and you translate me? Better, yes. אני, בתקופה שלי, שנתחלתי ליצור, תחשוב שה... אינטרנט, עדיין כל הדברים האלה לא היו מפותחים. זאת אומרת שאני אמרתי שאני יצאתי לעבוד בשטח ולפגוש אמניות שמתעסקים בזה, זה פיזית היה. פיזית היה לחפש אותם ברשימת הטלפונים ולהיפגש איתם. So at the beginning of Vered's work, and, and maybe, uh, Sivan, you can tell you something about the Achuti movement, because uh, just so that we put this in context. Uh, at the beginning of Vered's work, um, there, there, there was no, uh, there, was, there was no directory. There was no, uh, the work didn't exist, and she had to go out physically and look in the phone book and uh, contact people by phone and actually go and do the legwork to meet people who were uh, talking and working in this, uh, in this uh, okay. <clears throat> um, Achoti movement is, um, uh, was founded by a, a few uh, feminist Mizrahi uh, activists, uh, scholars, uh, artists, and uh, the goal was uh, to promote to, and to, to, to build a language for, uh, <laughs> for uh, Mizrahi feminism and to promote Mizrahi women. And, and Shula Keshet is one of the main figures mm -hmm. in the movement. She's also an artist and a politician today and, um, and um, many other things she's doing. <laughs> We have a question from uh, Tutor102. Someone labeled that. Would you like to ask it yourself? Oh, hi. Sorry, I was, I, I guess I'm on my work uh, Zoom account. My name is Moore. <laughs> um, thank you, um, Sivan and Vered. I was just curious about uh, how was it to work with your parents like this? Uh, it looks, it, it, so, so many of the scenes um it looks like you've been going through such intimate and vulnerable and fragile um you know confessions and um and performance so i was wondering how mm -hmm. was it to 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 do that okay karen you can tell me a little bit i understand but i want to understand it a little bit more in the context אה, היא שואלת איך זה היה לעבוד עם ההורים שלך, זה נראה מאוד אינטימי ומאוד רגשי, 
ואולי שברירי אפילו, איך זה היה, כן, שברירי, איך, איך זה היה לעבוד עם, עם ההורים שלך. לפני שאני התחלתי לעשות, לביים אותם ביצירות שלי, אני במשך שמונה שנים צילמתי אותם. זאת אומרת שאני בניתי בהדרגת המערכת יחסים שלי איתם מול המצלמה. ויש רגעים שהם... ואני יושבת ואני מסבירה להם גם לפני כן. Okay, so one second before I forget. Um, so I, I spent many hours uh, working with my parents and talking to them before the, uh, the uh, photography shoots, preparing them and talking to them about what it is that I uh, am hoping to achieve. And um, ליצור את העבודה. So through the dialogue, um, uh, oh, my video is off, sorry. Uh, through the dialogue, we, uh, we, we start to create the work. We have a question from uh, Susan Metrican, HBI's uh, Curator of the Arts. Hi, good, good morning or good evening, Sivan and Vered. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Vered, I have a I wonder um, if you could elaborate on some of the art historical references that have inspired your work and how you see the relationship to those references and your work now, if it's primarily critique or I do sense um, in your work a, a sense of humor and play. And I wonder if, if it works between critique and playfulness or something else. את, את נקודות ההתייחסות ההיסטוריות לחומר הכתוב ו, ושיש הרבה הומור ואם יש מוצאת הרבה הומור בעבודה שלך. כן, הומור זה, זה חלק מההישרדות שלי, זאת אומרת נורא חשוב לי שגם אם אני מעבירה מסרים שהם לא קלים זה שיהיה להם גם את המקום של השמחה, של הצחוק, ולגבי ה... אוקיי. Hold on. So it's really important to me that through, even though I'm, I'm talking about very difficult subject matter, that I always find the joy, the humor, the, the fun in the difficult subject matter. ולגבי הרפרנסים שלי זה... אלה דברים שאני כל הזמן מלקטת, אם זה מתחום השירה, שזה ויקי שירן, עכשיו קצת התחלתי לחקור את ברכה סרי, זה על ידי וידאוים שראיתי של רונית אלקבץ. אוקיי, הולנד. So mainly my references, my inspiration is come, comes from um, uh, movies and poetry. Yeah. Shana Weiss will ask the next question. Hi, thank you so much, Vered, um, for coming. Um, so my question is really sort of for both of you, and that's, Something that was alluded to that Sivan said was that um, this idea of maybe not rebelling as much against tradition, right? Um, and in this context, we can think about Jewish traditions, religious traditions, et cetera. So I was wondering, and this is both for Sivan if she wants and also you, Vered, what is the role of these Jewish symbols, these religious traditional symbols in your work and how do they play out um, in your thinking about this visual culture? You want me to? You want to start? Okay, so. I can say something. Um, in, generally in uh, Mizrahi artists, not only the women artists, like uh, uh, for instance, in Lior Grady's work, uh, 
there are um, there is uh, there are many uh, symbols of uh, Jewish symbols and references to Jewish world, and um, I think of it um, as um, and, and and everything is in the context of the national uh, enterprise of the or uh, Zionist history and Israel is uh, the history of Israel. So um, <clears throat> I talk a bit about it uh, as the uh, as uh, an example for the way that the um, Mizrahi Mizrahi people didn't didn't reject the 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 Jewish world like the Jewish uh, uh, tradition and uh, and and the daughters like uh, Vered and that like Daphna Shalom uh, the artist uh, Daphna Shalom the in in, her, in their work and uh, the traditions appears and it's it's in the center and it's not an um, uh, it's not a um, uh, it's not something that uh, um, in the, in, in, imitating, how do you say it? Yeah, uh, threatening. Threatening. It's not uh, uh, like uh, Zionism put, uh, had uh, treated the, uh, the tradition and the, uh, religion, the religious people as a threat to the Zionist project, which mm -hmm. was uh, or is a uh, very um, uh, uh, atheist in ways, in many ways. Ah, because uh, it's difficult for me to speak in English. Uh, Robert uh, Pavone will ask the next yeah. question. Jared, do you have something that you wanted to add to that? Oh, I'm sorry. I think she um, say, uh, um, I apologize since these extreme caste differences were not known to me as an American Jew, this, that, that extreme, but the skewed historic representations were obviously skewed to exaggerate and protect the status quo. But mm -hmm. these conditions existed and while misused, were they not in themselves a story of poverty and unacceptable conditions that their fellow citizens could also rally against those who were uh, sympathetic? I know that in the displacement camps after the war, the um, North African Jews were treated very differently in the displacement camps in Europe. So there's another example how they were treated differently. Mm. Uh, I didn't quite understand the question. <laughs> Karen, you can. Uh, Karen. Yeah, I'm not sure. Can you? Would you want to rephrase the question itself? I can understand it to you. Yeah. Uh, no one's understanding it. <laughs> no, I'm just. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is that I understand that um, the way these were misrepresented in their extreme. Uh, actually helped cement a bit, a poor image of mm -hmm. Mizrazi Jews. They were cl clearly bigoted, if that's the right word here. But I also would think there were Jews and there were Israelis who would like, like we have in the United States when we see poverty and, and mistreatment of other citizens, it became instead a rallying point to say, no, these people are not being treated well. It, it couldn't have been that black and white. Wouldn't it have been also a rallying point instead, historically? Hmm. <laughs> Am I still not being clear? So are you talking about the, the visual references? That I'm not talking about the current art. I'm talking about the, the examples the of, of the examples, historic examples of how they were exaggerated to mm -hmm. cement their positions Mm -hmm. Their lower positions instead of, and I'm wondering why there weren't people rallying. There were, weren't also other people saying this is not right, just mm -hmm. like we, res, we try to respond, at least I do, to poverty in the United States or mm -hmm. years ago to the way blacks were treated. It, a lot of people, instead of just say, oh, this is the way they are, actually respond in a, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, meaning in, in, in a way where uh, we try to say, no, this should not stand. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, uh, throwing probably the Black Panthers in Israel were a response to that. So I אני חושבת שמה שהוא אומר זה שהשימוש בצילומים, בעדויות המצולמות האלה, זה היה גם בעצם קריאה להתקוממות. וזאת התגובה ש... Yes, and... ובאמת, everybody was in survival mode. So, האם... מה קרה? למה לא הייתה התקוממות כנגד הצילומים האלה? אה, אוקיי. You, you, you mean only, you mean only the, the visual, to the visual sphere, to the visual representations, or in general? Uh, I'm talking about the visual representations that you started the presentation with to show yeah. how they were misused against Mizrahi Jews, that they were misrepresenting them as extreme only in one way and not other parts of their lives. They were okay. further uh, cemented into a caste Yep. And I'm asking why these, instead, this could be, have been um, uh, news of, or for lack of a better word, documentary of how um, these conditions existed and, uh, and they, they would be seen as unacceptable mm -hmm. to other Israelis. Like these people shouldn't live this way or be treated this way. I'm sure the entire mm -hmm. nation didn't feel that way. There had to be people who said, no, this is not the way it mm -hmm. should be. Uh, I'm sorry if it's too, if it's either a naive question or too difficult. Um, no, it, uh, it just seems it, like that's the way people, sh some people could have responded, was, which is yeah. that this is, this is baloney. This isn't tr totally true. My neighbor is not like that. And she's Mizrahi. <laughs> Dana Weiss has uh, <laughs> some historical perspective on this. Yeah. Dana? Oh, you're muted now, Shana. Uh, I can say something about this. Um, I think as for the, res uh, uh, for the resistance uh, regarding to visual representation, you, you, did, you did talk about this, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we, I think we have to, to remember that it was, it's the beginning of the 20th century or I'm talking about the first half of the 20th century. It's time when we, we don't, there's, there, there's no access. Uh, you, can't, you can't see, you, can't, you couldn't see so much the, the photos and the images and the, and the vi videos of films. Uh, only few people could see them. And also some of the photos were sent, were, uh, was sent abroad uh, the, uh, to in in uh, in different campaigns uh, um, uh, for different campaigns. So I don't know if, uh, if people had the ac uh, access to to see and to um, and to think if it's if it's uh, wrong or, or or right for them. And um, yeah, so I just want to pipe in as a historian um, and add that. So first of all, from the very first, honestly, days and weeks of Mizrahi immigration to Israel, there was organization among Mizrahi immigrants themselves to get better conditions, to fight okay. for themselves, to be in contact with people all over the world. Um, there was more and more research being done on this. There was an idea of Mizrahi Jews as sort of passive and not fighting for themselves. Um, we know that's now actually historically not true. Um, there are books by Brian Roby, um, Ori Bashkin who talk about this organizing. Um, we start to see protests, um, especially in the 60s. Um, but even before that, there was protests and organizing to better their conditions. Now, why, why this wasn't noticed by the American Jewish world or the larger world, right? That's what you all have already talked about. Who has access? What are the images of Israel being portrayed abroad? Americans don't, you know, most American Jews are Ashkenazi. So they're not, to a lot of extent, they're not quote unquote, seeing the Mizrahi Jews, right? That's a, something that still goes on until today. So mm -hmm. like many struggles, there was organization from the very beginning and that continued, but- sure. 
it didn't yeah. it took a while for the rest of the world to pay attention I just want to add this is the other thing I wanted to say that the organiz organizations and struggles and the resistance didn't start in the 50s uh, whereas uh, 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 Lior Grady's exhibition Natural Worker, for example, uh, uh, shows that, uh, I mean, he, he, he relates to the fact that uh, the Yemenite community in the beginning of the 20th century were uh, resisted their situation. And we have many test, uh, uh, testimonies of uh, resistance uh, in relation in relation to the war conditions of Bezalel workers, Mizrahi workers, and uh, in many places. Actually, uh, part of my uh, uh, research is to show that uh, um, a Zionist uh, uh, Scopic regime actually showed, I mean, these photographs, I, I investigated photographs, showed the uh, Mizrahi women and men uh, and when they uh, uh, when they are in the in this as I said before uh, doing um, actions of uh, uh, labor surviving labor and uh, uh, taking the the role um, uh, occupying the role that was given for them uh, by uh, Zionism Zionist uh, hegemony but in fact uh, all the all the uh, resistance was not a uh, photograph. The resistance mm -hmm. was not photographed. Uh, so, um, and also the violence, there was a, 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 a phenomenon of violence towards the uh, Mizrahi people in the first half of the 20th century. This is not in the photographs also. Uh, so uh, it's uh, complicated. Uh, can, can I uh, can I throw into the mix the idea of uh, systemic racism as it uh, is uh, as we're facing it to this very day of the re the structural reinforcement of of white uh, dominance um, you know, we're living the parallels um, I think it's important to to name it in mind. Thank I just you. want to add another sentence that uh, uh, I want to, to link or to ask about the connection of the history I have uh, presented, the history of uh, uh, the role of, or the, the vision of roles uh, in, uh, for uh, Jewish uh, women. And, uh, and to think about the, the vision of roles of uh, uh, Mizrahi women, Ashkenazi women, or Mizrahim and Ashkenazim generally in the Israeli art scene. Because mm -hmm. uh, as, uh, uh, as we found, we found if, if you check the uh, solo exhibitions in the uh, Israel Museum and Tel Aviv Museum, since there was a renovation of both museums, there were no, actually, uh, almost none uh, exhibition, solo exhibitions for Mizrahi artists, and I mean pol uh, political Mizrahi artists that gives them, uh, that bring the the political uh, challenge to the white dominance of art scene. So uh, this is very rare. This is what I said to to our my friends here that invited us. This is very rare. This is very important uh, uh, for us, for me, for I think uh, this opportunity and uh, the situation. Vera uh, received uh, um, uh, in last few years, uh, uh, re she receives the, um, I mean, Sumit uh, Lev, attention. Attention, a very good attention. and uh, But but still, where is the solo exhibition in, in Israel Museum? Daphne mm -hmm. Shalom, Vered Nisim, Mizrahi artists uh, that are working 25 years already in the field. And uh, we see the same division of roles in every, in every field uh, in the Israeli uh, society, every field and also in this field. 
So this is a question I think uh, is uh, that can be brought, uh, I don't know, we should uh, think about. Uh, so last question to uh, Lisa Fishbein Jaffe. So I, I'm, uh, I'm really glad that this session is uh, a small contribution to addressing that gap in, uh, in celebrating the work of uh, Mizrahi uh, women artists. And my question was kind of related to that. Um, so you, you kind of traced the path of Mizrahi feminist artists in the last 25 years. And I wanted to know if uh, you had a sense that their work is moving from the margins closer to the center. Um, because the, the, the sense I get of um, Israeli culture, looking at it from the outside and looking at it in English, is there's much more attentiveness um, to its multicultural nature. And, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's a focus on uh, Mizrahi food and a celebration of that, of Mizrahi music and popular music. Um, and, uh, and even in the TV that gets um, translated uh, into English. And, I, and uh, I, I thank Shana Weiss, whose area of expertise this is for introducing me to a lot of this material. Um, but, but for example, um, some of us have been watching, I, I think it's called Valley of Death or Valley of Tears. Yes, tears. The Yom Kippur War. Um, which the major theme is about uh, Mizrahi dissatisfaction and, uh, and the Black Panther movement uh, in the yep. early 70s. Um, so is that, is that ref does that have an impact on where uh, Mizrahi feminist work is and it, is it part of a greater attentiveness throughout Israeli culture right now? First of all, I want to say that we have many experts, activists, and the uh, scholars here that they write here in the chat and they are in front of me and uh, it's uh, great to see everyone. I want them to talk, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a good point because in, in the cinema field, the situation <laughs> is totally different. Also in the music field, um, the situation is different. The uh, power relations are different. Uh, we see uh, voices and creations of Mizrahi people in the center of the world, like Ronit El Kabetz and other other Mizrahi artists. But in the in the art field, in the fine art field, it's different. I, 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 it seems like the art the art field uh, keeps like. Um, it keeps the the uh, I don't know the the kilo nishar and shomrim alam alam atzav k'mo shehu kilo ve'mod mod kashel. So uh, Sivan is saying that there's a, an attempt or a sense that there's a to keep the stratification stratification the way it is uh, the, this uh, and not to change. Um, yeah. Actually, I was. Uh, fighting in Facebook with the, the main curator of uh, Tel Aviv Museum. Uh, since then, we, I don't think we are talking anymore, but uh, <laughs> I, I said that there is no, there is no, uh, the situation is not good. Uh, Mizrahi artists are not uh, receiving a, 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 center, a place uh, in the art world. He said, look, we have this one and this one and this one, but uh, uh, it's not. Uh, it's not that. Uh, that I'm. Uh, we, uh, I. I mean. I am. I mean. Uh, we. We want uh, Mizrahi politics that challenges the discourse and uh, brings um, uh, different or uh, point of views inside and, and also for the game beachasle tafkidim betochasadeze. It's all Ashkenazi. The the yeah. all the field is Ashkenazi. Yeah, the positions yeah. held are Ashkenazi. Um, not not at all dissimilar to what's happening in the art field in the U.S. right now. Uh, all very um, incredible parallels to be drawn. Um, so I think we're going to wrap up here. I just wanted to say a couple of things. One is thank you very much, Vered. Uh, for your for the work that you are doing, which is incredible, Sivan for elevating this issue, um, and uh, to J Arts, HBI, the Schusterman Center, and CJP. 
I will make a plug, a shameless plug for uh, Brighter Connected, which is the J Arts virtual Hanukkah celebration, eight mm -hmm. uh, art installations in eight different parts of Boston. And uh, I know that um, Laura is going to put the plug, the, uh, the link in the chat right now. And that our next session will be on February 11th at 9 a.m. with Galit Reisman, who is a, um, uh, a fashion, a fashionista, a fashion expert on Israeli fashion. Mm -hmm. And we'll be looking at uh, Israel through that lens. Um, so I, we hope you'll join us again. Thank you. Chag Chanukah Sameach. May we go. Thank you, everyone. Darkness to light. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.